This is an aluminum mountain bike, and this is a steel mountain bike. We've all heard sayings, steel is real, steel is better, but is that just a myth or is steel really better than aluminum? Today, I'm gonna to be swapping nearly identical frames. Same brand, really close geometry. The only difference is one is aluminum and one is this beautiful steel. And then I'll get some time test to not only see if steel feels better, but to see if there's any performance benefit. Is steel real? To start off, the saying steel is real, it's just kind of weird. This frame is real, and same with this frame, it's real, I'm touching it. So what are they talking about when they say that? Steel frames have been around since the invention of the bicycle. Steel was used as an engineering solution to mass produce bikes. Over time, steel bikes became more affordable using high strength steel like chrome, molybdenum 4130 or chromoly for short, and companies emerged like Reynolds Tube Company with their tubing that was thicker at the ends than in the middle, making for exceptional strength at welding points. Steel bikes are said to be the strongest of the bicycle frames that can last a lifetime longer than aluminum. Despite its strength, it's not overly stiff and people describe the ride quality to be springy, lively, and able to flex and absorb the bumps of mountain bike trails. So during Hardtail Quest, Bird Cycle Work sent me this, their Bird Forge 29 that retails for $750. This frame has a mixture of steel, Reynolds 853 tubing in the front and 4130 chromoly in the rear. This frame looks vintage and classy, but it also has nearly identical modern geometry compared to my Bird 029, with the biggest difference being the stack is 30 millimeters taller. Both of these are aggressive hardtails, and oh boy, I love my Bird 029, the winner of season one of Hardtail Quest. That bike is a rocket ship, the best balanced bike that I've ever ridden, and earlier this week, I set some times on my local trails to get some base numbers to see if maybe the steel version is better, maybe it's faster, or maybe it's slower, <laughs> but now it's time to strip my bike down, and I'm a little sad, and I have a feeling that I think I'm gonna like the aluminum more. So I've had this office chair for years now and it is blown out, causing me back pain at this point. Well, FlexiSpot, the makers of my sit to stand desk, reached out to sponsor this video and they sent me their C7 ergonomic office chair. I'm really surprised how beefy and solid these parts feel. I got the mesh cushion for breathability and I'm really excited to try out an ergonomic chair for the first time since I spent hours on the computer editing these videos. This chair is designed for people of all heights with super adjustability and FlexiSpot has a 30 day return policy. So if you don't like it, just send it back. Plus a 10 year warranty. This is really a high quality office chair. Feels comfy so far. So right off the bat, you can tell there's a huge weight difference between the aluminum and the steel. I mean, it's pretty noticeable and I weighed the two and this frame weighs 6.6 .6 pounds, 2.2 pounds heavier or one kilogram heavier than the aluminum frame. But I will say that I really like the look of this thing. And it's really crazy how they use Reynolds tubing in the front. So it's actually thinner in diameter than the seat tube. And there's a lot of space here, two water bottle cage mounts and gigantic tire clearance in the back. And then if you hold these frames side by side, they are just super close. And yeah, the stack height is 30 millimeters taller, so that's not a huge difference. So I think these frames should basically be identical. So I'm pretty excited. Let's get this thing built up. I recently picked up this mastic tape for frame protection. It was kind of expensive, but a 10 feet roll should last a while. I'm using it as kind of like a DIY frame protector and it's been working great and it sticks so well. I've yet to have it peel even with the repeated bike washes. That's 
looking pretty short. Let's see, no spacers. Is it gonna work? Oh, that's not too bad. I've seen way worse than that. I think we're good to go. I really love external cable routing, especially in this situation. Here I am swapping brakes and drivetrain over, but I didn't have to disconnect any cables. So no adjusting the derailleur, minimal caliper adjustment, and it really makes a frame swap so easy. As I'm sitting here doing this voiceover, I gotta say this C7 ergonomic chair is just so comfortable. This is a game changer. It's really great posture and a ton of lower back support, and it's really adjustable too. Able to recline, lean forward, be neutral, and then I can slide the seat cushion forward and back. Even the lumbar cushion is adjustable and self-adaptive to your position. And I really like how I can sit cross-legged with the 20 inch seat and it supports up to 300 pounds. I think this thing is gonna last a while. A quick note, I know I flashed the Hardtail Quest intro in the beginning, but this is not the start of Season 2 of Hardtail Quest, it's more of a follow-up. I'm slowly buying and purchasing parts for Hilo Season 2, but that's only going to come out once I hit 150,000 subscribers, so make sure you subscribe because Hilo 2 is going to be way better, I hope. But with that, the bike is complete and we're ready to hit the trail. So what do you guys think? This steel hardtail looks amazing and I can see why people like steel already, but we used to make fun of people for a build like this, you know, steel frame with carbon parts everywhere, even clip pedals, this seems kind of weird on a steel bike. But that's because steel bikes are kind of made for the, the fun, you know, chilled out ride. It's made for like, it, you know, the benefits of the steel kind of soft and cushy and then also just the ties to the vintage roots it's not like a modern race machine with carbon yeah but i did a couple bunny hops in my driveway and i feel like i can already tell the difference so let's go see how it rides ready set go for these time tests on the climbs i'm using my power meter to try to stay at about 150 watts for consistency. Then for all the downhill trails, I will take one pedal off the top and that's it. I'll just have to maintain my speed for the rest of it. And since I don't have the numbers written down, we'll have to figure out which one's truly faster back at the shop. This bike feels so much faster. I can uh, carry my speed a lot more Coming to the end. All right. If that's not faster, I don't know. My uh, gauge and feel of what's fast and not just is totally off. That was so much fun though, dude. The, the front end felt great. I mean, it was more confident. I felt like uh, I was more planted on the trail. I feel like I was more connected to the bike. And uh, I really thought at the start of this that steel is real is this kind of like a myth that's kind of hype that it would be only like marginal gains if anything and then the weight would kind of bring it back down a little bit but so far i'm only feeling positives no negatives whatsoever but now the next up i could feel some negatives right now i'm gonna hit a we'll just call it a technical climb it's a really steep climb with a lot of switchbacks not a lot of rocks to navigate but i'm gonna maintain 250 watts and uh Easier said than done, let's just put it that way. So let's get this going. All right, 250 watts, let's go. 
definitely hard to maintain 250 or any kind of wattage on a mountain bike trail when there's so much variation in terrain. There it is. Well, that felt pretty fast. Maybe the aluminum had the edge on that one. But next up is a flow trail called Medieval, and I'm one second off the KOM. So let's see if I can get that. All right, one pedal off the top. <laughs> yeah well that confirms my suspicion this bike on really fast bumps on that even on that flow trail it, it uh, it's not perfectly smooth it gets a little overwhelmed compared to the aluminum bike which i didn't notice those bumps at all before <laughs> so with the aluminum bike i can hold a lower line on the turn and like carve it easily with this bike it kind of wanted to drift up there but i still want to go for the kom so i'm gonna give this another run here we go i'm gonna give it a little bit of pedaling this time just to get that kom hopefully i think i can do it Felt good, only time will tell. That's a KOM, I gotta check back at the house. That run felt fast, but I was not done with the testing. This climb trail is called Lombard with its 22 turns to get to the top, and I maintained 150 watts all five times I climbed this. Next up is a chunk trail called Dragon Skills to see if the steel frame can soften the harsh bumps and maybe lead to faster times. I also met a subscriber named Curtis who wanted to lead me out down the chunk. All right, here we go. Dude, this bike is so precise. Like I can turn better. It's like, it's more supportive. It's also more predictable and not as uh, punishing. Whoa, I just hope I don't mess up my uh, carbon rims. <laughs> Uh-oh, chain's off. <laughs> I feel like I'm abusing the crap out of them. Wow. Oh, yeah. Dude, the chunk was way better, dude. Ah, uh, last time on the aluminum, there were, there were points where I was like, oh, this section is gonna hurt. Oh, this section, I was like tensing up. But this one, I didn't have that feeling. I was just hopping into it. And it really takes the edge off a lot of the bumps. Like the aluminum feels like a, like a ting. And this one feels like a dong. That's the best way I can describe it. But let's head back to the house and see if it got better times. Okay, the times are in and man, this is pretty interesting, but Oh, it feels so good to sit down though. This FlexiSpot C7 chair was a great addition to my office space. And as the tax returns are rolling in, now is a perfect time to get a new office chair. And you can get $30 off your purchase if you head to FlexiSpot.com and use my code C730. I'll have a link in the description and if you do decide to purchase, it helps out the channel. And remember, FlexiSpot.com and code C730 for $30 off your new office chair. But all right, let's get back to the times. So I'm having a really hard time finding out any negatives with this steel frame. I mean, it was more fun, better traction, better at trunk, stronger frame. I mean, where's the downsides? Yeah, this was two pounds heavier than the aluminum version. But if we look at the climbing times on the climb trail Lombard at 150 watts, 
My average time throughout five runs was three minutes, 45 seconds with the aluminum and three minutes, 44 seconds with the steel. So basically the same. Then with the steep switchback climb, the steel frame was four seconds faster, negligible difference. I did a longer traversing single track on one of my favorite twisty windy trails called Medusa and the Bird 029 got 10 minutes and 11 seconds and the Bird Forge 29, the steel version, got 10 minutes and 12 seconds, <laughs> one second difference. So all the trails with the climbing, no difference. But the geometry subtleties like the steeper seat tube and the higher bars did feel pretty nice. But then that brings us to the downhills. And after three runs on each bike on the chunk trail called Dragon Scales, the aluminum version averaged one minute and seven seconds. And it was just kind of painful. Like there were some sections where I just knew it was gonna hurt. Compared to the steel, it definitely softened the hard edges of the chunk and the average time was four seconds faster, overall one minute and three seconds. Overall on this trail with a little bit of loose rocks and turns, I was just so comfortable. I could steer however I wanted, except for there, I got a little too confident. I felt planted, it was predictable, it was amazing. All right, and then about the flow trail and the KOM, this one's important to me because I've been chasing this KOM for like three months now, so. Let's get this thing uploaded. Let's check Strava and... King of the Mountain. I got it! Oh, yes, dude, I got it. Heck yeah, man. Oh, it's a tie. It's a freaking, it's a three-way tie, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I gotta go a little bit faster. A three-way tie, and I was pushing it, too. I was trying hard, but I... <sighs> See, this is where the aluminum would come into play. On the trail, I mentioned that the steel frame got overwhelmed in a really fast section. I was going like 28 miles an hour, but that has not ever happened with the aluminum frame. And was that a difference in geometry, you know, the lower stack on the aluminum, 0.4 degrees slacker head tube, or was that the steel flexing to the point of recoiling and pushing back, causing the bike to feel out of control on those fast bumps in that turn? I'm not sure. What do you guys think? I could definitely hold a lower line in the turns with more composure on the aluminum. So I think if I'm going for another fast paced KOM, I'd probably bust out the aluminum frame for those marginal gains, that extra 1% to grab the top time. Mind you, the flow trail attempts on the aluminum was just with one pedal off the top and the steel final attempt was all out, pedals everywhere I could get them. So is the steel frame faster in chunk? Oh yeah, definitely but is it faster with jumps and flow trails? I'm not sure. Regardless of everything, the times and the weight and all that, overall, this bike is just more fun and I am sticking with the steel frame and steel is real isn't just marketing, steel is awesome. Man, just two weeks ago, I said that I like coil shocks too. Who am I? And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. I'm doing high low season two once I hit 150,000 subscribers with this bike. And if you're in the market for an affordable full suspension, use my link below. It helps fund high low season two.